All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be reacting to five times. TikTokers mess with the wrong cartel. I know I've been trying to switch it up, dive into different type of videos and stuff. Yeah, but let's see how it go. Hey, lo andamos cerrando para nosotros. Lo que es, esto lo hicieron demostrar lo que pasa en el dinero y el poder. O sea, lo que pasa en el bridge. July 7th, 2022. A TikToker shut down a bridge in Mexico with luxury cars just to shoot a video. This angered one of Mexico's most dangerous cartels, and what they did to him changed the course oh, of his man. life forever. Here, five times TikTokers mess with the wrong cartel. Rodolfo Marquez. Rodolfo Marquez, also known as Fofo Marquez, is a controversial Mexican influencer who has millions of followers across his social media. Born on the 15th of July, 1997, Fofo was undoubtedly born into a wealthy family. There's not much information oh, on his family background. Still, from what we know, his grandfather made shoes for high-profile dignitaries in Mexico, while his father was one of the owners of Total Gas Station before he passed away. Now, it's obvious Fofo comes from a wealthy background, and his social media personality basically revolves around him posing in the most luxurious cars, going to clubs with his friends, and living that Mexican dream. It was also through sharing his luxury lifestyle and social media that he garnered more than 3 million gram followers, making him what Gen Z's call an influencer. However, Fofo's fame on IG wasn't enough. He decided to navigate his way to TikTok, where he established a fan base, but also began getting himself in trouble. A lot of people had eyes on him, and of course wanted to bring him down, but Fofo didn't care. He, he had a huge stuff? ego, and felt like he was unstoppable. But all that ego was crushed down to the ground the moment he messed with one of Mexico's deadliest cartoons. Cartels, the new Jalisco Generation Cartel, aka CJNG. I'd be doing you a huge injustice if I didn't tell you about the severity of this crime syndicate and yeah, its ruthless methods. Once you're aware of their operations, you'll understand why anyone, even someone as seemingly insignificant Damn, as a TikToker, guys. would face serious danger by crossing yeah, paths with loaded. them. In fact, a number of TikTokers featured in this video have unfortunately encountered this very same criminal group. And I can't help but wonder why. We are That's the new group Matazetas, and we are against kidnapping and extortion. And we will fight them in all states for a cleaner Mexico. Those okay. were the words written in a note by the Jalisco New Generation Cartel back in June 2009, after they executed three Mexicans and dumped their bodies in a truck. Damn. Mexican authorities initially underestimated these guys as a minor faction within a larger cartel. However, the CJNG swiftly demonstrated its menace by executing 35 members of rival cartels Damn. and discarding their bodies in various vehicles 35? along the Mexican highway. The cartel's leader, Nemesio Segueta Cervantes, also known as El Mencho, has gained a notorious reputation of being the devil in human form. Born on July 17, 1966, El Mencho emerged from a farming family of six siblings. And despite this background, he diverged early, seeking a more ambitious and nefarious path to success. One marked by the stain of cocaine and the blood of Mexicans, El Mencho's criminal journey began at 14, performing menial tasks for larger cartels, and then in the US, where he continued his criminal pursuits. However, he was deported to Mexico after a Texas-based gang-related sentence. Now upon his return, El Mencho joined the Millennial Cartel as an assassin. However, the cartel's subsequent fragmentation led him to ally with the Sinaloa cartel subgroup under Ignacio Nacho Coronel. Here, he managed drug operations, finances, and violence in the Mexican states of Colima and Jalisco. But after a few more years, he took charge of half the group, renaming it Cartel de Jalisco Nueva Generacion, or the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. With El Mencho at the helm, the CJNG evolved into one of the globe's most violent criminal entities, donning military-grade equipment that could be mistaken for official Mexican military units. They're bad, they're cruel, and they're not to be messed with. So what exactly did Fofo do to piss uh, off this extremely powerful and corrupt organization? Just just like almost every TikToker out there, subjected to posting daily videos to keep their followers entertained, Fofo was doing the same. But this time, he decided to do something not many have kind of done in Mexico. So, on July 7th, 2022, 
Fofo took three luxury cars and parked them right in the middle of the Matute Rimus Bridge in yeah, Guadalajara, okay. Mexico. He came down from one of the cars and began filming the traffic that was building up right bro. behind him. He said Black things like, Howie. We've closed it for ourselves. This is what I want to demonstrate, what money and power can do. Literally, I closed it here because I wanted to. Illuminati. He went on to brag about how he had shut down the bridge for several minutes and how all the other cars were honking. He even contemplated doing a few TikTok dances while innocent people were denied access through that bridge. Fofo posted that on TikTok and it didn't take long for that video to go viral. A lot of people online shared their disgust at Fofo, raining insults on him for his nonchalance and stupidity. One Twitter user even called him a headless imbecile. The mayor of Guadalajara also threatened to press charges against him with TikTok. <laughs> Talk officially banning his account while they took down that video. In less than 48 hours, Fofo couldn't access his account anymore and resorted to other platforms to tender his apology. He apologized for his childish behavior and asked for forgiveness from the people affected. Always the mayor accepted Fofo's apology, but stated that he needed to complete several hours of community service, cleaning beneath that same bridge he blocked. Left with no option, Fofo agreed to do as he was asked, but it was at this moment that the CJNG decided to punish Fofo for his actions. Just when the smoke for his stupid video had gone down, the CJNG reignited the entire case with a message sent to Fofo Marquez. The message went viral on social media, and it was from an anonymous account named Gente con la Gente NG, which translates to people with the new generation. The message was also written in Spanish, but it roughly translates to this. Hello to all the people of Guadalajara. We are the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. As you might know, the influencer or scumbag Fofo Marquez dared to obstruct the flow of traffic on the Matute Rimus Bridge, which is an act that we don't tolerate. We'll not allow this animal to get away with this. We are in charge of Jalisco and all of Mexico. We would not allow you to come to Guadalajara and do this type of thing. If you ever step in Guadalajara, Lahara. Not you or your money would save you from us. Now, seeing how El Mencho and the CJNG as a whole are driven by intense violence, it could have been anyone who wrote that message to Fofo. Members of the CJNG believe that El Mencho should be feared and worshipped by Mexicans. So Fofo pulling such a stunt in a town under the direct control of El Mencho himself was an insult to El Mencho and his authority. Fofo's undoubtedly wealthy, but where his wealth stops, is where that of the CJNG begins. These guys rake in billions of dollars annually and control a significant billions? portion of the Mexican government. Their message terrified Dang. Fofo because he knew that no one could protect him if the CJNG decided to actually kill him. Once the message circulated, things got real. The CJNG doesn't make jokes, and Fofo knew this. He tendered an apology to him online and immediately ran back to his parents' mansion in Mexico to seek refuge. But being in that mansion wouldn't change change anything. The family then hired armed security men to guard the house 24-7. But even with this, Fofo wasn't safe. The CJNG had taken down the deadliest cartel hitmen squads and even the battalions of the Mexican army in the past, so no amount of security could hold them down. Fofo was scared. He couldn't leave the house for days, stayed away from windows to avoid sniper attacks, and even carried a transceiver around so he could communicate if he was ever in danger. After a few months, Fofo finally returned to his life, but his actions against the authority of the CJNG altered the course of his life till today. However, as crazy as that sounds, this next teenager had the guts to insult El Mencho directly. Why do they keep doing this? Illuminati like, what is the, 6. What is the point of doing this? Y'all can't just have fun, go watch y'all out. I gotta bring other people into this. Oh, he crazy. Very strong words, right? Well, those were the words of a guy known simply by his TikTok handle, Illuminati6. Before his account became private, he engaged his followers by accepting the dares they gave to him. And on that occasion, one user dared him to insult El Mencho, which he did. He? In the video, oh, the TikToker God. wore a slacked black round neck and a blacked ripped pair of jeans and was carrying a backpack. He leaned on a light pole and said, Listen well, you son of a bitch. El Mencho can suck my dick. 
He then says, I don't sleep like El Pirata or El Chanito de Coyacan. Referencing two other social media teenagers that had been executed by El Mencho. He finished off the video by saying, I'm immortal, untouchable. I made the pact with the devil. I came to give you fire, Mencho. I'm not scared to say this. I'll say this with the camera right here. Mencho can suck my dick. Wow. I mean, you have to applaud the guts of this little young man oh. who felt he could insult That's El Mencho. Stupid. When that video went viral on Reddit and Twitter, a lot of people felt he must have been a member of the cartel to have such confidence in those words. While showing his face in the process, different users said things like, R.I.P. in advance. This guy's going to get himself killed. And this is a tutorial on how to disappear. But for some reason, no word was heard from El Mencho or even the CJNG. Some rumors said that the teen wasn't based in Mexico and that's why it wouldn't be easy for the CJNG to get to him. It was reported that he lived in Richmond, California, making it hard for the CJNG to even attack him even if they wanted to. Plus, it would have been an attack on foreign land, further complicating things for their organization, so the CJNG did in respond. But there was a twist. A few days later, this teen uploaded another video apologizing to El Mencho for his words. He said, I'm sorry for what I said. I wasn't well. I wasn't conscious of what I was saying. It was wrong. That day I woke up stupid. I didn't look at the consequences. I did that for followers. I ask for forgiveness. You and your family are well liked. Mencho, don't kill me. I have a family just like you. I apologize. We, we all make mistakes. I have psychological problems, sir. Just remember, we, we like you. The internet went crazy with this apology video dropping. Because that was the same guy that had so much to say to El Mencho mm -hmm. just a few days before. People started to wonder whether or not El Mencho made a personal threat to the teenager without everyone else knowing. Or did he just snap out of his little TikTok fantasy to realize who the heck he was talking to. And while we never got to know what happened behind the scenes, this TikToker just vanished huh? and his account was made private. There was a video of him posting on another TikTok account some weeks later. Later. But apart from that, no one can say for certain what happened to this guy. So do you think El Mencho killed him off silently? I mean, maybe he did. Who knows? Juan Luis Lagunas Rosales and El Chanito de Cuyacan Juan Luis, hailing from Mexico, gained internet fame under the alias El Pirata de Cuyacan, translating to Pirate of Cuyacan. Born in Sinaloa, Juan's upbringing was marked by hardship. His father's absence and his mother's limited work opportunities left him in the care of his grandmother, who could only do so much. Now, interestingly, his childhood neighborhood was situated just a few kilometers away from the domain of the renowned Mexican drug lord, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. However, Juan's path had yet to intersect with the world of narcotics until he opted to abandon high school and pursue a better life in Cuyacan. Upon arriving in Cuyacan, Juan took on various low-paying jobs to sustain himself, but concurrently, he developed an unhealthy affinity for alcohol. This habit of drinking permeated his work and leisure time, regardless of his underage status. And we all know nothing good comes from consuming way too much mm -hmm. alcohol, but for Juan, it kind of did. His problematic relationship with alcohol propelled him to prominence. He established a YouTube channel where he uploaded videos of himself consuming copious amounts of whiskey and beer, followed by his reaction to becoming intoxicated. While it might have seemed unconventional, these videos garnered an unexpectedly massive number of views and reactions from the audience, and adding an element of humor to his content contributed to his rapid rise. His Facebook page amassed over a million followers, while his Instagram had around 300,000. Remarkably, his popularity led to appearances in music videos and television shows. But again, nothing good comes from consuming way too much alcohol. And Juan's sudden fame took a drastic turn for the worst. He started posting images on his gram that didn't sit well with the older demographic because he was just 17 years old at the time. Oh, his photos 17? depicted him with firearms, Dang. luxurious automobiles, and often scantily clad attractive women. And although everyone thought he landed himself with the evil underworld of Mexican narcotics, he wasn't affiliated with any cartels, at least not yet. Instead, a meeting with Beto Sierra, a social media management expert, marked a turning point for El Pirata. Sierra's guidance encouraged him to transition away from that alcohol-centric content and embrace more marketable ventures, such as unveiling his own merch and even attempting a singing career. However, Juan remained like a ticking time bomb.
bomb, and his fate was sealed sooner than anticipated. On multiple occasions, Juan openly expressed his defiance towards numerous adversaries, including a drunken video in which he provocatively insulted Nemesio Osegueda Cervantes. What's his name, everybody? Oh, El man. Mencho. He uttered that these exact crazy. words. El Mencho a mi me pela la verga. Which carried a bold confrontational meaning in English, loosely translating to El Mencho, feel my dick. I mean, I really don't get why these guys put themselves in harm's That's way, knowing saying, how like, dangerous El Mencho is? is. Not even El Chapo's cartel dares to provoke CJ and G, and we know it's because of their extreme levels of brutality and violence. Yet these teenagers, maybe for a few likes or the eagerness to go viral on social media, see the need to call out a man that kills humans like flies. In response, a fair CJ and G issued a stern warning for Juan to avoid stepping foot in Jalisco if he wanted to remain alive. But Juan didn't care. He went ahead to host a party with his friends at a Jalisco oh bar. God, that was why? the moment CJ and G Sicario sent them on an immediate journey to the afterlife. December 18th, 2017. Armed men stormed the bar where Juan was celebrating, and with a hail of over 18 bullets from high caliber firearms, his life was abruptly extinguished in less than Dead. a minute. The numerous Crazy. wounds inflicted made it so hard to even recognize that body. He was later identified by the tattoos on his arms. His death, rather than his life, became the subject of a feature in Rolling Stone magazine, focusing on his demise at the hands of CJ and G, and of course the stupidity of challenging one of the most wanted men in the world. But also with his death, El oh, Chanito de Cuyacan, another Mexican teenager, saw it as a medium to gain clout. With the death of El Pirata, El Chanito decided to call out El Mencho, saying he was out to seek revenge for the death of his friend. The viral video showed El Chanito holding a rifle, along with a small child whose face was covered, also wielding a rifle, while they cursed out El Mencho. They called El Mencho words like stupid, and even mocked El Pirata for consuming so much alcohol just for content and internet fame. I mean, you don't need us to tell you that this statement obviously led to El Chanito's death. But for El Chanito, the CJ and G decided to take things to the next level. El Chanito apologized for his statement to El Mencho and played the insanity card, claiming to be mentally ill. But this didn't stop the CJ and G. El Chanito went off social media for a while, and everyone suspected he had been killed. But the real confirmation of his death came when an anonymous Redditor posted a video of him being beheaded by CJ and G Sicarios. The footage was immediately taken down That's for its crazy. graphic content. But the message had been passed. Do not mess with oh, El Mencho. Wow. Leslie and Pamela Montenegro. Leslie Ann was a Mexican social media influencer who gained fame as a TikToker, YouTuber, and celebrity. Sadly, she met a tragic end due to her decision to reveal intricate details about a notorious cartel in Mexico. Known by her online persona, Nana Pelucas, Leslie engaged her audience with videos ranging from politics and makeup tutorials to daily vlogs about her life. Her I'm online presence together. took a unique twist when she I'm adopted the persona of a lady donning a black mm -hmm. afro wig, old red lipstick and oversized glasses. In a manner reminiscent of current TikTok trends, she would amusingly interact with people in supermarkets, asking them trivia questions to get their reactions. Now as time went on, Leslie's following expanded, prompting her to shift her content towards exposing corrupt officials within the Mexican government. Leslie didn't outrightly call out names. Instead, she skillfully conveyed her message through humor. Though its impact remained unmistakable and stirred up considerable controversy, of course, one might think that exercising everybody. freedom of speech would carry no harm, but mm -hmm. in Mexico, that reality is a bit mm -hmm. different. The journey towards her tragic fate began when she started shedding light on the activities of the enigmatic independent cartel like, of Acapulco, why, one man? of Mexico's most secretive Dang, criminal organizations. This particular that cartel operated stealthily, often overlooked due to its clandestine nature. They played a massive role in the hundreds of homicides carried out within the town of Acapulco. And were one of the many smaller groups in the area. Returning to Leslie's narrative, her publicizing of the cartel's actions exposed her to death threats. Banners accusing her of collaborating with rival cartels to unveil the independent cartel's secrets and deliver them to the Mexican government began appearing around her restaurants. In response, Leslie vehemently denied these allegations, asserting that her information stemmed from reliable sources and that she had no affiliations with any cartels. Despite these threats, 
threats, she remained resolute, continuing her postings and exposing the cartel's activities, which turned her into a genuine mm -hmm. threat to their operations. About February 5th, 2018. Two men entered her restaurant during her night shift, ordering beers, before mercilessly gunning her down. She received three shots to the upper body, ending her life on the spot. Fortunately, Mexican authorities managed to apprehend one of the individuals responsible for her murder, El Pipas. The subsequent trial, however, took a perplexing turn. The presiding judge inexplicably dismissed the charges against El Pipas, oh, despite an abundance of undeniable evidence. This unsettling outcome starkly illustrated the deep-rooted corruption that Leslie had fought against. Cartels manipulated the judicial system, even influencing high-ranking government officials and copying instances like El Chapo's daring prison escapes. Leslie's demise inadvertently oh, led wild. foreign entities to investigate the Acapulco cartel's affairs, eventually revealing the city's perilous state. The town itself made the ranking for being the world's second most dangerous city. The United States even issued issued a special travel ban to dissuade its citizens from visiting the city of Acapulco. Leslie's hope of exposing the city's issues to both the public and the Mexican government aimed for change, yet she tragically underestimated the extent of corruption. So in her pursuit of justice, Leslie messed with these cartel members and paid for it with her life. That, my friends, is something that won't be forgotten in a hurry. Miss Asusina Uresti Earlier this week, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel posted a video online in which they directly threatened Oresti. TikToker and newscaster Asusina has also managed to imprint her name amongst those in the bad books of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. In August 2021, Miss Uresti became a target of the CJNG after they released a message calling her biased and a supporter of vigilante groups in Mexico. Miss Uresti is majorly involved with the press and, as of now, what seems to be her TikTok account has been made private. In the video released by the CJNG, six Sicarios were dressed in black clothing and carried automated weapons, while a seventh man who said he was a representative of El Mencho sat down and delivered his message to Miss Uresti. The spokesperson said, I'm not against freedom of expression, but I am against anyone that attacks me. He went on to talk about how the cartel would find and kill Miss Uresti for spoiling the name of their organization. Oh, According to their side of the story, the vigilante groups Miss Uresti claims are peacemakers in Mexico are in reality drug traffickers in disguise. These vigilante groups have undergone countless attacks on different cartels to paint themselves as heroes to the Mexican government. However, the CJNG believes they're just another deadbeat group looking to eat from the spoils of the Mexican narcotics underworld. They also claim that only a cartel would yield that type of ammunition these vigilant groups possess. However, Miss Uresti's life became a national treasure because after the CJNG's video went viral, the Mexican president, Obrador, assured the country that nothing was going to happen to any Mexican or even Miss Uresti for speaking the truth. In his statement, he said, It's our responsibility that Mexicans are not intimidated or threatened by anyone. The presidential spokesperson, Jesus Ramirez Cuevas, tweeted a post about the incident, saying the government would take the necessary measures to protect any member of the press from speaking their mind. Then Ms. Uresti spoke for herself, saying that she was now under the protection of the government and didn't seem bothered by the statement from CJNG. Yeah, Since then, Ms. Uresti has been living her life and there had been no attacks against her. It could be that the CJNG had decided to let her be, or they could be waiting for the perfect time to strike. Either way, journalism is a tough job in Mexico, and I don't see why Ms. Uresti should blindly put her faith in a government that has sat back and watched hundreds of journalists before her die at the hands of different cartels. So maybe Uresti is the only TikToker and social media personality to mess with a cartel and get away with it. Maybe she'll still pay the price. And maybe, just maybe, you like this video. Join the fam and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the... That is crazy, bro. I don't understand, like, fame not worth it, bro. Because most of them people out there are just doing it for fame, bro. And that's just crazy. It's not worth it, in my opinion. I'm not about to threaten nobody like that to get no popularity. Like, that is crazy. Yeah, but... If y'all like the video, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what y'all want to see me react to next. And I'll see y'all in the next one.